My name is Frank Kingsley, and my wife is Patricia Young. We have been married for 20 years and have two children, Mark and Karen. I am returning home from taking Emma, our youngest, to start university. I am looking forward to getting home and finally confronting my wife about her affairs spanning the last 12 years, this last affair being the most serious. She intends to leave me for her lover now that our children have gone. I'm just turning into our street and can see our house. The light is still on, so she hasn't left yet. I pull on to our drive and get out of the car. I open the front door and walk in. My wife is sitting on the sofa looking a bit scared. I don't know why. I have never even raised my voice to her, let alone my hand. She looks at me and glances at the two suitcases standing just inside the door. I also look at the cases. Peggy Frank Kingsley has gone to take you to start her first year at university. I'm sitting on the sofa waiting for my lover to pick me up. My bags are packed, and I've left a note telling Frank that I am leaving him for another man. But my lover is late and worried in case Frank comes home first. This is just the latest in a long line of lovers I've taken over the past 12 years. But this one is special, and we are in love. I think back over the last 12 years and the lovers I've had. The first lover was my tennis coach at the country club. He was so attentive and caring. It was a great shock when he moved away without so much as a goodbye. The next one was a work colleague on a work-related trip to New York. We had a little too much to drink, and I woke up in his bed. At first, I was annoyed with myself, but then, either why not? No one will know. This affair lasted over two years, always on company trips and sometimes in his office when we were working late. Then one day he just didn't come to work. It was rumored that he ran away with a girl half his age who disappeared at the same time. The one after that was an old flame from college. We met by accident at a charity sale. After the sale, he asked me to lunch and we sat and reminisced about our fling at college and ended up in a motel where we spent the entire afternoon. This lasted all of six months. Then one day he just didn't show up in our meeting place anymore. This brings us to my latest lover, Tom. He is the husband of my best friend. We started flirting at a party he and Gina hosted. It started out innocently with a bit of flirting and then touching and finally kissing. After that first kiss, we groped each other whenever we could. We were intimate in his bed and also in our bed. We were insatiable. And then we realized we were in love and needed to be together. So here I sit waiting for Tom to pick me up. He is now nearly half an hour late, and I'm getting worried that I've been dumped again. I look at Frank. He looks so calm and in control. What does he know that I don't? So why were you going to just leave with Tom? Or were you going to tell me? He knows about Tom. How did he find out? I point to a note on the table with my wedding rings on it. He looks and picks it up throwing my rings onto the floor. I wince at the implied insult. The note from Patricia. Dear Frank, as you can see, I have left you for another man. It's not important who. I love him and he loves me. We're going to move far away so you won't have to see me. Please don't try to find me. It will only cause you more hurt. We had a good marriage and some good times, but over the past couple of years, we have drifted apart. I did love you and I know you love me but it's time to say goodbye. Update from Peggy. I watched Frank read the note and smile. He then put the note in his briefcase and turned to me. Thank you for the note. It will make things easier when I divorce you. I won't need to show the video of you with Tom. What video? The one where Tom and I were in our bed being intimate like teenagers while disrespecting and making fun of me. You must remember, it was only last Tuesday when you said you were at the spa. Did you have me followed? How long have you known? From the beginning. You see, I've had you under surveillance since you were with your tennis coach. I know all about your lovers. Why didn't you say anything if you knew? Because you would have given me the usual it didn't mean anything. It was just... I love only you. And of course, the biggest lie, I won't do it again. It was you that frightened of my lovers, wasn't it? What did you do? Threaten them or buy them off? And what about Tom? Have you bought him off as well? Why didn't you just divorce me? Because I wanted the children to grow up in a normal family atmosphere. And also, if I divorced you, you would get half of everything I have worked for, plus spousal support and child support. I wasn't going to pay you to be with your lovers at my expense, so I just got rid of them. Let me tell you a little story. 
When I was in grade school, my best friend was a boy named George Finney. He was a small boy and got picked on a lot, but I was always there to stick up for him and kept him out of trouble. I got the black eye and split lip instead of him. Pretty soon, everyone in the school knew that to mess with him meant messing with me, and that would be painful. We stayed friends right through college, and we are still friends today. To make things a little clearer, George's mother's maiden name was Gamby, the same Gambini family that runs the East Side Rackets. George's mother wanted to break away from the family and be legit, so they sent him to a normal school. In college, he graduated in business studies and law. I graduated in business studies and accountancy. Much to his mother's dismay, he joined the firm, and as my investment company grew, I was employed to invest for the firm, giving a veneer of respectability to their investments. In return, I made a lot of money. George also said that if there was anything he could do for me, to just ask. Well, when I found out about your tennis pro, I called George and asked his advice. He said he could take care of it, and so the tennis pro disappeared. Oh my God, you hadn't kicked. I thought she was going to be sick, so I went to the kitchen and got her a bowl. Yes, and the same thing happened to your second, third lover. As soon as you started to get serious with them, I had them taken care of so that Mark and Emma would still have a mother. If you hadn't started to talk about leaving me, it would still be alive, so it's your fault they suffered. She looked up at me with tears rolling down her face. I suppose Tom's kicked too, though. I'm quite happy for you to leave me for Tom. The children are away at college now, so they won't be needing you. Tom is alive and well, not for long, and waiting for you to join him. The look on her face was priceless with the relief she felt. So why didn't you let me just leave with Tom? Well, before you go, I wanted to extract a little revenge. You remember our little dog, Fifi, and that I always fed her and took her out to do her business, while the meat in the freezer marked for dog only was cut from your sex partners after they knew no more. So every time she had us, it made me think that her partners were nothing but dog in the end. The buttocks and thigh muscles make a great steak. You even commented on how great they tasted when I grilled them for you. Just think, it was the last time you ate them. This time she did throw up, but she missed the bowl. It went all down the front of her dress. She continued retching until there was nothing left to bring up. Well, now you know and I have had my little revenge. These gentlemen will take you to meet Tom, and you can spend the rest of your life with him knowing you are responsible for your ex-lover's fate. Goodbye, Peggy, and I hope you rot in hell. One of the two men picked up her cases while the other one escorted Peggy out to their waiting car. She never said another word, as promised. She did spend the rest of her life with Tom. They lived in his car for as long as it took to sink the 200 feet to the bottom of the old quarry, 10 miles from town. Now they are all in the same place together, one cheater and four wives stealing a holes. Story 2 My 20-year sister is getting married to her 36-years-old high school teacher. My younger sister is getting married to her 36-year-old high school teacher in a few days, and everyone seems okay with it. She graduated a year ago, and they told us they were dating almost immediately after the graduation. I was shocked and angry, but everyone around me was happy and supportive of them. The teacher divorced his wife two years ago and started paying attention to my sister. He spoke to her after class regularly and paid special attention to her studies. I thought this was weird, and talked to my sister about this, but she told me he was helping her because she was the best student of her class, which she was. A few months ago, only a few months into dating, they announced that they were engaged. I tried talking to my parents about their age difference and stuff, but they didn't want to hear it. I talked to my sister, and she told me she is happy and that she loves him. We live in a small town with a tight-knit community, and everyone else is supporting their marriage. I'm feeling useless right now, and I am angry at myself. I was unable to protect my sister. I feel like I failed my duties as an older sibling. I hate everyone around me. How do they not see what's going on here? Update 1. The marriage happened. I contemplated not going to the ceremony, but I didn't want to hurt my little sister, so I went reluctantly. My blood was boiling throughout the whole thing. Everyone who came to the ceremony congratulated them. I couldn't even look the teacher in the face because I was so angry at him. I hated the whole thing. I'm leaving this town tomorrow. I had some interviews lined up and got selected in one. It's in a city, and I'm moving tomorrow. 
I can't stand these people. My parents think that getting married to a good guy with a stable job is the best thing that could have happened to my sister, and my relatives agreed. He groomed her. Why doesn't anyone else see that? I wanted to scream at everyone. When I told my sis I was leaving, she cried. I reassured her and told her that I wasn't angry at her. I made it clear to her that she could contact me anytime, under any circumstances, and then I'd be there for her. I bought her a phone and told her that I'd talk to her regularly. I tried to not antagonize anyone because I'd want them to reach out to me if anything happens. It was very hard to do. I came very close to fighting several people. My sister was a star student. I'd always thought that she would go to a big college and become someone significant, but now she's going to be a housewife. That thought is destroying me. I wasn't harsh on her because I'm hoping that she wakes up soon and I want to be there for her when that happens. I want to support her and see her full potential, and I'm wishing it happened soon. Edit. I've told her not to have children until she's sure. She has a contraceptive implant, and I told her not to get it removed for at least a couple of years. I told her to tell me if anyone ever pressured her to have it removed. I really hope she follows my advice. Edit 2. I'm just checking the comments and the amount of people defending the teacher is insane. People like you are the problem. She was groomed since she was 16. Why can't you people see that? I wouldn't have any problem with her choices if she wasn't coerced into them. Him being an older man isn't my issue here. Him being her teacher is. Also, I don't think that being a housewife is bad. What I don't like is that the choice of something more is being taken away from my sister. As for the phone thing, my parents did not allow my sister to own a phone. She had to use the landline if she wanted to talk to people. That's why I bought her a phone. Final update. Update a year later. I wanted to share an update on my sister's situation. Since it's been a year and the situation has changed significantly in a positive way since the marriage a year ago, I've made it a point to talk to my sister regularly on the phone that I gave her. A few weeks in, her husband started pushing her to be in a traditional wife role, which created a wedge between her and her friends, but I made sure to keep in touch and to visit her once every month. Her husband did not like that, but he tolerated it to keep up appearances. To deal with my frustrations, I joined a gym and started working out. Luckily, my boss at my job turned out to be a great lady who listened to me and gave me a lot of support and advice. She told me I could call her when I needed help and became my mentor and an older sister I could lean on while also paying me well. Some months into the marriage, her husband managed to domesticate her completely. She stopped going out almost entirely and had very little independence. And he tried to start separating my sister from me. However, because I kept a good and consistent relationship with her, he wasn't able to do it. A couple of months ago, he started hinting to my sister about wanting kids, but I kept repeating to my sister that she should not have children until a few years into marriage. Last month, he told her directly that he wanted children and my sister told him that she wanted to wait. He started pressuring her to get her contraceptive implant removed, so last week I went back home to talk to him. I always try to be polite to him whenever I visit their home so that he doesn't have any ammo to try to separate us. During conversation, I brought up that he was pressuring my sister to get her contraceptive implant removed. It escalated into an argument with him saying that he had a right to have children with his wife. When I didn't back down, he got frustrated and took a swing at me which didn't connect properly. I didn't hesitate in punching him back in his face. He fell backwards and started howling in pain. I wanted to do that since this whole ordeal started and it was satisfying. I think him hitting me was my sister's wake-up call. He called the cops and told them that I assaulted him. Fortunately, I make sure to record everything whenever I visit their home. I called my boss and told her about what happened, and she promised to send a lawyer just in case. When the cops arrived, my sister took my side, which surprised her husband. With me being a woman and with the recording, the cops also took my side. The lawyer arrived after that, and I told her husband that I was taking my sister with me. He tried to protest, but the lawyer warned him that I would press charges if he stopped my sister from leaving. He reluctantly let her go, and she has been staying with me for the last week. My parents were furious when they found out that my sister left her husband. They did not seem to care that he hit me, probably because I stopped talking to them. I am still talking to my sister about what she wants to do and will probably start divorce proceedings in a few days. 
Her husband and my parents have been trying to call and get her to come back, but I've made sure that she doesn't talk to them without me present. Throughout the whole thing, my boss has been super helpful and has been giving my sister advice about what she could do next. I know that I'm super lucky that my sister managed to wake up so soon and that I've had support from people like my boss throughout the whole of last year. I was worried about how my sister was going to end up, but I am elated now.